How do you like that? I love it. I like it. <laughs> I, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to the stream. I'm Clever Like. I'm joined by our awesome creative director, Gatlin Shadow. What's up, Gatlin? Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, awesome. So yesterday we brought the activity one, teaching everybody like all the cool reasons how, how to build your robots in inside of our new. Uh, robotics learning kit inside of Unreal Engine that's now available for free to the public. So if you want to learn how to do uh, robots and uh, program robots and build them and watch them do all the silly things that robots do, it's available free now in the Unreal Engine marketplace. We'll mm -hmm. show you how to get all that stuff. And today, this is probably one of the most popular activities I have ever taught in robotics, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is because I don't know. It's maybe it's entertaining a little. Yeah, entertaining. That was the word. So it's yeah, super <laughs> entertaining. To watch these uh, sumo robots battle each other. So we're going to be showing you. Uh, so when I'm teaching a class here, um, first of all, a couple things. And maybe I'll interject with some more of these. But basically, you want to get your robot uh, to not lose a sumo battle to nothing. All right. So when you put the <laughs> robot in the ring by itself with no competition and it drives, if it loses, then you have a problem. So the first thing you have to do is not lose to nothing. And then once you're able to stay in the circle, then you could start thinking about, like, how am I going to make this thing battle and uh, and win? And so that's what Gatlin's going to do. So well, let's uh, let's let's kick it off. So Gatlin, talk to us about this uh, this activity number two and how we're going to get to building sumo robots. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this activity number two, I'm going to bring up my stream. Oh, look at that! I don't have to. Brian's got it for me. So this activity guide, uh, we will totally be putting in the description and throw it in the chat. Like we'll we'll have it out there for you. So the idea behind this one is that we're we're scaffolding basically from lesson one where now we know what kind of makes a robot and how they get around and the good ideas and some of the bad ideas, you know, like don't put the wheels inside the actual machine. Like it looks cool, but it may not work kind of thing. So we're going to take all of that stuff that we kind of talked about before and then kind of add to it here. So if you haven't checked that one out, go check it out. That's totally cool. If not, that's totally fine too. You can start from here and we'll kind of throw in a couple of little things here and there as we go. So you can kind of go, oh, okay, cool. Like now I get a nice little refresher or now I understand what's actually happening here. And what we want to do is actually create a robot that will not tip over and will be able to go forwards. And as it's going forwards, it can actually sense the outside of the ring. And then once it senses that outside of the ring, it needs to do something. Specifically, we want it to like either A, stop or turn around or if you get really creative, which we won't be going into today, unless we've got time, we'll see what happens. Um, you can make it do some really, really wild things. Like maybe you want it to like try and flip the robot or maybe you want it to like jump backwards when it gets over to the uh, the edge of it, right? Like that's totally up to you, whatever you want to make it happen, right? So what you see on screen right now is the actual Let's Train Virtual Robots PDF. And this PDF is, again, totally free, just like everything else. And to get this as well as uh, the actual project, we have other videos on that. So we'll put those in the description too. So check those down below. And we're basically just going to kind of roll through this. Um, I'm not going to do word for word. And in fact, if you're looking through this and you're like, oh, that wasn't actually in there. I'm going to be throwing in little tidbits, little tricks that will make you a little bit more efficient, right? Now we talked about like this guy right here. We talked about this one yesterday. So we're going to bring it up again too. Like I said, we're going to go over some of this stuff. So um, yeah, I think I think that pretty much covers everything. I don't know, Brian, did you have anything last? Otherwise, I'll bring <clears throat> No, that sounds, real, that sounds real good. I just posted... The, um, the YouTube video of the getting started. So cool. 
<clears throat> that's going to get you a lot of the essential project files and everything you need. So make sure you check that out. And then we'll start throwing in the links for activity number two. So you want to walk us through the, um, the lesson plan and the activity guide for, for uh, the, the second activity. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's, let's make a thing. Let's do this. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this one off to the side here, uh, but I'm going to hold on to it close by so that I've got it so I can kind of reference it and I'll be like, Hey, I'm on page three. I'm on page four. So what you see on screen now is probably kind of what you will get when you open this up. Um, and you'll notice that the UI is a little bit different. Um, I've been running in Unreal 5 for a while. So I want to preface that you can do this in Unreal 5. Go check out that getting started video because there is one tiny little thing that you're going to have to do to get the robots to go forward and not backwards because reasons. Yay code, right? So if you get something that looks like this, or if you're missing some kind of UI interface stuff, something I want to point out, and this is especially for teachers, you, you may find that your students are like moving things around on screen and they're like, I don't know where all my windows and everything went. Like there's pieces missing. All you have to do is come up here in a window. Okay. And we're going to come all the way down here to load layout. And this first option says default editor layout. Just click on that. It'll do a quick little flash and come back and then you'll get your default editor layout, which is gonna be really helpful. Um, the one thing that is not default is that down here in the corner, I have this opened up. So what I wanna do is I'll show you how I opened this thing up. So down here in the very, very bottom left, this little button, I'm gonna hover over it, this one right here, I will open up this little viewer thing. I don't know what else to kind of call it. It's kind of a source panel, right? Um, if you click on it, it'll go away. I'll come back. So I'm going to use this more often than not. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this place actors because we're not going to need this this time around. So to do that, there's a little button right here. I'm just going to turn that off. Oh, if I could get it to draw. There we go. So it's right about there. I'm just going to click that and it's going to go away. Goodbye. And this is just going to give me more real estate. So that's really helpful. Now, the next thing I want to do is actually go to the level that I'm going to be working inside of. Now, you can get the Unreal Engine editor to actually load a specific level whenever you open this up. So as a teacher, this may be helpful. So for those of you that are taking notes, check this out. What we're going to do, we're going to do a little digging. It's not too bad. Go up into edit um, and go to your project settings. What we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, I want you to load a specific level every single time you open up this project. Instead of having all these little critters running around here. So I'm going to go project settings wait for it and we'll get this window inside of this window we're going to search for maps and modes which is right here and specifically we've got this editor startup map and you can see mine right now it says learning kit games showcase i don't want that that's not the one i want at all in fact what i want is robotown so i can click on it whoops and then just start typing here we go and we can get map underscore robotown and this one is the one I want to have open up every time I open this project up. Wait for it. Oh, buddy, don't crash. There it goes. Cool. So now it's set. And you don't have to try and save anything. All you do is close this window. And you can do that with this little button up here. So now every time I open this up for the remainder of these sessions, it's going to open up in Robotown. So I don't have to try and get it to open up elsewhere, right? So this is going to be good. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now it doesn't change it in the actual editor. We do actually need to navigate to that. So let's talk about navigating to that. So down in here inside the content browser, down here in the bottom left, I'm going to make sure that I'm in my robot learning right here. And I'm going to open that up by drilling down in the little triangle here. And then what I'm looking for is this maps robots. And I can either open this up or I can just come over here with it selected and I could just double click on Robotown. So I'll just double click on this one. Wait for it. Ta -da, yay. So this is kind of a great place to just kind of start in general. You get a chance to kind of see all the fun little robots. And what I want to do is I want to point out the robot that we're going to make. So up here in the top left-hand corner, you find this little kidney-shaped, I don't know what else to call it really, little spot. And inside of here, there's a little robot. And this little robot right here will actually stay within this area. So I'll just kind of draw this area, this little black line. And we're going to basically create that. And if you click and drag in here inside the viewport, Right, So I'm just using my right mouse button to click and drag. I can kind of rotate my camera like I'm turning my head. Once I do that, that lets me know that I'm now active inside that window. And I'm going to press the one key on the keyboard. And I'm going to zip on over to that. So yay, now I'm right over here. So this robot is basically what we're going to create. This one right here. Let me show you what this thing is going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And wait for it. And you can also control the camera while this is actually playing. So I'm going to right mouse click and hold. And then I can use ASD and W 
to kind of move around from place to place. If you have a controller, by the way, you can use your controller too. So I've got a little controller here. I guess you can't see that. I'm not on the screen for the moment, <laughs> but I can go ahead and use this to kind of get around as well, which is nice. So if you're more familiar with that, that's totally a thing. And you can see that this robot will get to the edge. It'll detect it and it'll turn around and it'll go back in. So that's what we're gonna make. So I'm just gonna hit escape on the keyboard. There we go. So let's go to said map. So to get to that, again, I'm in my maps robot folder down here. I'm gonna go to L2, the folder here, and I'm just gonna double click on it. So here we have two maps. We've got the line detection, which we want we're gonna be working in. And then once we get our robot made, we can then go to our sumo ring. So wait for it, we'll go to that one later. All right, so let's go ahead and just double click on this one uh, map underscore two dash one line detection. Whew, that's a mouthful. That's a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. You got it though. You got it. <laughs> I got. I got it in one too. Yeah. Okay. So this is the map that we're going to work in, and you can see it's got a couple of cones out there just in case things get a little crazy, a little bonking right back in, right? One of the things that I want to point out that in this level, uh, should you have problems trying to select things, you can actually kind of lock it down so that people can't get at it. So I'm going to show you this really quick. So what we can do is instead of being able to select like the walls and the floors and moving all this stuff around, let's undo that, control Z. What I'm going to do is come up here into window and I'm going to go into levels. And instead of here, you get a little floating window. And really what we want to do is just be working in this persistent level. But if we look over here on the right-ish, you'll notice that this level is unlocked. So this detection, this environment one, right? So I'm just going to lock that up. So yay, now it's locked up and I don't have to worry about accidentally clicking on something. I can't select anything. Just click, 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 click. The only thing I can select now is the actual robot. Okay. So that's going to kind of help that. So just in case, that's a good thing to know. And then if you just do a quick save all, you'll find that down here on the left. That will actually save what's actually going on here. So I'll go ahead and save that. Said, hey, do you want to save this stuff? And say, yeah, I just, I just hit the save button, right? So, <laughs> now, quick caveat. I've kind of been messing around with some of the stuff inside of here. One thing that I really, 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 <laughs> for those that are taking notes, like look over here. Something that's really important is make sure that persistent level is still, if it's, you know, in blue, that's good. If it's in bold, that's better. Like we want to make sure that it's blue and bold. If I were to, don't do this, double click on one of these. I said, hey, it's locked. You can't do it, right? Um, I can't actually select them now, but sometimes you can actually select these and put, you know, add things to these worlds that you don't want to do, right? So we want to make sure this is bold and blue. So if we just double click on it, that'll make it bold and blue and then we'll be good. Okay, so now that that's set up, the world is ready to go. I'm just going to go ahead and close this down. Perfect. Now our setup is done. So what we can do now is actually start to get into some of the code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this back over here so you can see where I'm going to be at. Scroll down here a little ways. Um, we can kind of talk about the robot a little bit. So we can talk about that one. Um, we can also kind of talk about where the level is. We already did that, so that's awesome. Um, what we do need to talk about is definitely the light sensor and how this light sensor actually works. So first, let's look at the robot, and then we'll talk about the light sensor. So I'm going to drag this off screen again. So with the robot selected, I'm just going to left mouse click on it. I'm going to press the F key on the keyboard as in frame. It's every student's favorite F word in class. You can get away with it, right? So I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit. I'm going to right mouse click, and I'm just going to hold the W key till I zoom in a little bit closer. If you feel like the camera is moving way too fast, up here in the top right-hand corner, you can actually change how fast the camera is moving. Now, mine is currently set to three. And you can just click on this and just scroll through here and kind of change it. Um, three works really well for this kind of intimate workshop. Now, if you want to set it down to two, I, that's totally fine too. Like, that's totally cool, right? I'm gonna leave it at three. All right, so with the selected, what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna back up a little bit, use my scroll wheel. I'm gonna grab this arrow that's pointing straight up, and I'm just gonna lift this up. And if we look at the bottom of this, so kind of look at it and press the F key, I'm gonna hold down the Alt key on the keyboard and left mouse click and drag, and I kind of get down below it, and then I can kind of zoom in, right? And you can see what we have going on here is kind of this triangle shape, right? And this triangle represents uh, the gl um, glide ball on the front, and then we've got two wheels on the side. And these three points of contact to create our actual triangle. This is going to be very sturdy. Triangles are a very sturdy shape. And it's going to be really hard for us to kind of tip this thing over one way or another. So this is a great setup. It's not, maybe it's not the best one that you can think of, right? But it's a nice example to kind of get you up and running with this. So this is kind of what we're going to be working with. I'm going to go ahead and press the one key on the keyboard again, just to kind of reset the camera. If I press the two key on the keyboard, you can see I can kind of zoom in, but hey, let me right mouse click and drag straight. 
and I can pull this thing back down to where it was. Now, something else I want to point out before we get into this, before we look at this tensor, is you'll notice that it feels like it's jumping, and that's not the stream. Uh, what's actually going on is that this is set up so that it's set on a grid, and this is a default inside of Unreal. So what we want to do is not move on the grid and snap to grid points like we're doing. What we're going to do is we're going to set this up so it's kind of a free, easy move, and that is up here. So this little section right here has our grid snaps, specifically this little button right here that's orange, right? So if I click on that, now as I move this around, you see it's much smoother. While we're at it, there's also one up here that actually does the angles. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that one off as well. So now as I go to rotate this, I can use my little rotation tool. It's right here, right there. Strike through it, right? So right there. So now as I rotate this, it'll be a little bit easier on the eyes. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about the sensor. This thing doesn't have a sensor on it. So I'm going to bring this back over. And our sensor is not going to look like this. But this shows a really, really, really good kind of what this thing is going to do. So on the left-hand side of this, right, we have our sensor. Right here in the middle of this, we have a blocker. And what that's doing is it's just making sure that the light doesn't actually go directly into the sensor, which is this little guy right here, right? So our light is coming off. It's actually going to bounce off of something and then come back up. Now, anything that's a very dark color, like so, is going to reflect less light, represented by one arrow, or in this case, now two, right? Anything that's much lighter, like a white, it's actually going to reflect much more light back to it, and that sensor is going to get a higher reading, right? So this might be something like 10. This one's going to be more like, you know, 90, right? So it's going to be a much higher reading. Now, inside of Unreal, we can't do this exactly, right? But we can kind of estimate it and make it you know, kind of fake it. So we faked it within this to make it behave this way. One of the awesome things about game engines is that you can kind of fake the real world. And that's really <laughs> what all game engines do. It's just theater. It's really all it's doing, right? <laughs> so if you're on say, uh, page seven, you can definitely check that out and read a little bit more about it. But what we want to do is go ahead and move forward. And we are going to start to add in the actual piece. Let's keep going down here. So on page seven, we're going to actually, sorry, page nine. <laughs> It's an odd number. We're going to go down to page nine uh, and we're actually going to start to build the code. So just in case you want to know where we at are inside of here. Okay. So to get to the code of our little robot here, what we're going to do is we're going to actually open up its blueprint. Now there's a myriad of ways to do this. Uh, one way is to actually make sure that this is selected. And then over here, there is this edit blueprint button. And if I click on that, the first option we have is open blueprint editor. So I'll just do that. You'll most likely get a floating window. I think mine's going to dock. Oh, no, it's actually going to float. Yay, cool. So this floating window, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this little tab up here in the top left. I'm just going to click and drag it up here to the top. And you'll see I can kind of dock it next to the other one up here. So now I can kind of work inside of here. And then when I need to go back to the level, I'm going to click on this other tab right here, right? This line detection, map two, right? So I'll click on that. And then I can go back. So I can toggle back and forth between these little interface stuff that's really nice. Now, if you've got a second monitor, by all means, just grab this thing and throw it over there on the second monitor and work with it on there. Can be helpful. I've only got one monitor to show you cool stuff, so I'm going to have to work with this one. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is actually put that light sensor in here, right? So this is down on, I believe, page 10. Yeah, cool. So we need to add that in here. This list over here in the top left are the components for our actual robot, right? If we want to see our components, we can actually go over here to the viewport, this little tab right here. So if I click on that, we're like, hey, there it is. And you can use all your navigation uh, tools or <clears throat> hot keys to do this. So what I'm doing is I'm holding down left mouse, and I can look left and right. But if I hold left mouse and right mouse, and I push my mouse away from me or pull it toward me, I can just go up and down. And that's how I'm doing that. So that's really helpful. Okay. So you'll notice we don't actually have a sensor in here. We have a cute little icon. Yay, cute little icon. But what we want to do is actually put a sensor right there. So let's actually grab that component. So up here in the top left in our components, there is a big green button. This big green button is going to give us access to a whole bunch of stuff. Specifically, what we're looking for is a light sensor. So if we click on that button and touch and type into the search components, light, we can actually find this BP light sensor. I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see it, right? So this is the light sensor that we've built inside of Unreal. This does not come with Unreal Vanilla version this is something that is only inside this project so what we're going to do is go ahead and use that with this one highlighted you can either click on it or i'm just going to hit the enter key on the keyboard and it's going to go ahead and add this in here now before i go anywhere 
on page 10, you'll notice at the bottom of that, it talks about making sure that this is in the right location. And what we want is we want to make sure that it's down here at the very bottom and not nested under any of these other pieces. If it's nested, like I'm going to go ahead and just add it to, well, I don't know, this multi-sensor UI thing, right? You'll notice that it's like kind of indented and in there. We don't want that. We want to avoid that as much as possible. So just click and you can drag this up to the power core up here at the top and let go. And you'll notice that it'll drop all the way to the bottom and that'll set it right where we want it within our component stack. Right? and there's nothing else below it. So that's exactly where we want it. Now we need to actually set it up in the correct location in 3D space. So we can totally make that happen. Now, really easily, all we have to do is grab some of these arrows as long as this is selected over here, and we can just kind of pull this forward. And I highly suggest just grabbing these arrows to move it around. Don't just like click on it and try and move it because A, it won't happen, right? Let's undo that. And then I want to go ahead and rotate it so I can use my rotation tool up here and I can just rotate this. Oh, if I can click on it, there we go. And you'll notice that I'm getting a little number right next to it. It's kind of small on screen, but I want to basically get that at negative 90 because I want it to point straight down. If I can get it right, it's going to be a little bit tricky. And if it's tricky, that's fine because we can also up here in the top right, we can actually set our rotations up here as well, right? So if we reset all these, I'm going to click on the yellow button right there, right? This little guy. And it'll reset all of them. And I know this is the green one, this little green part of the pie. So that is the green value up here. So if I click on that and type in 90, it'll point straight up. Oh no, that's not what I want. Remember, we want negative 90. So I'm going to hit negative and then type in 90 and boom. And now it's going to face straight down. So it makes it real easy to actually put that there. Now, I also want to move it up a little bit. Um, it can sit right about here, but I've found in the past that I do like it up just a little bit. So if I press the W key on the keyboard, I can get my move gizmo and then again, hover directly over one of these little arrows and then move it straight up. Um, your arrow may be pointing up. That's fine. That's easy enough. Just kind of move it up. I'm going to move it just above this little icon. Yay! Congratulations. Give yourself a pat on the back if you've got that in there. Because this gives you a chance to move something around in 3D space. This is not always the easiest thing to do, right? So if you're finding it really difficult to move this around, take note of the numbers, and I'll zoom in on them over here. Up here in the top right-hand corner where it says location, rotation, and scale, you can basically just type these numbers in there, and you'll get it in that same location that I've got. So if you're having a little bit of a struggle, don't worry. We've got your back, right? The important thing with the with these sensors is that it's a reflected light sensor. So in the, in the real world, when you're using a reflected light sensor, if it's too far away, you, your light gets diffused and you really don't get much other than the ambient light in the room as your value. So, so it's not seeing much of a change, right? You really want that light beam to hit a surface and reflect light back into the sensor that affects mm -hmm. its ambient light reading. So that what that means is basically like these sensors, the the distance they are from the surface that they're that they're testing needs to be um, fairly close, not too close that it kind of stomps out the light and doesn't reflect any because it's blocking it and not too far away so that it doesn't sense any of that that light. So so your distance of the sensor to the ground, it will affect the value that you're getting back and the value between like seeing the desired surface and not seeing the desired surface, like the further those values are away from each other, the better reliability you can get on knowing like, yes, I want to go this or yes, I want to do that. So anyway, um, we'll cover, you'll see how that comes into play when we, when we code it, but yeah, heed that advice. He knows exactly what he's talking about. And I'm going to show you guys what that actually looks like in real time here in a minute. So he he fun toys, something that's not in, written inside the, the piece there. So yeah, there's that. Okay, so now that we have this here, we've actually technically changed the code inside of here. So we need to actually compile the information that we've done. Before I hit that compile button, though, I want to show you something kind of cool. If I take this tab, and I'm going to drag it down here. Right. And if we take a look, this robot right here that we've been working on is this robot actually in the level. Okay. And what I mean by that is if I grab this uh, sensor over here and if I move it, you can see that it moves in the game as well. So this gives you a chance to kind of be like, okay, is this too tall? Is this too far away? Is this too close? Like, where does this need to be? Now, after playing with this thing for hours, I know that right about here is actually a pretty good spot. Now you could have it totally cover that little clever like logo if you want. That's totally cool. But somewhere just kind of above it, and I'm looking over here, by the way, not up here. I'm, I want to make sure that it's just above it just a little bit, like right about there. That should be pretty good. Now, if it's too close as well, right? Like if I have this thing like here, it's not 
going to work real well because it's colliding with that piece, right? And if it's way out here, what's going to happen is that our robot is going to start to turn as soon as it actually finds that censored area here. And maybe we don't want it to turn that soon. Maybe we want it to wait a little bit, right? Like fake them out, right? Fake them out. No, not, am I going to turn? Am I not going to turn? It's gonna be Jukes, uh, break of the ankles. <laughs> break of the ankles, kids. Right? So let's go ahead and push this back where it was. Right about there it should work. Now I'll go ahead and unselect my robot here in the world so you can see kind of where this is at. To do this, I can hold down the control key on my keyboard and left mouse click on it, and that will unselect it. So now I can kind of see there's, there's a bit of a gap, and I will push it so it's just kind of there so we can see it like you see, there's a little bit of gap in there so yay that's exactly what we want right mind the gap keep it in mind all right now we have our sensor in here now let's go ahead and compile this yay now what we're going to do next let's go ahead and drop this up here at the top we're going to go back into the event graph up here and we're going to actually start writing some code so in here and you'll notice that we have events over here on the left and we have our run motor stuff here on the right we're going to work all over here on the far right hand side. Uh, these two pieces over here, these two events are going to be helpful. And let me show you how that we can connect to them. So if you're going to move around inside of the grid, if you right mouse click and drag, you can pan up and down and left and right. You can use your scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out. Okay. And your left mouse is going to allow you to select things or like box select or marquee select them. You can do that too. Right. So when we actually start the game, and that's what this one is for, so I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see it. So the event, this event is when the begin play happens, when the game actually starts. We're beginning the playing, right? That's when you hit the big play button up here. Yay, the big play button, right? When that happens, we need to run our robot. Well, this run robot event, we can call up here on the right. And this is actually a really fundamental thing to understand is that you can create your own custom events. That's what this is. Yay, custom event. And then you can call it. And to call it or to execute it or to make it happen, right? What I want to do is actually create, you know, a little function that calls this one. So I also want to connect it at the same time. So to make this happen, I'm going to click on this little pin, left mouse click and drag, and I can pull a wire out. Now, when I let go of the left mouse button, I get a executable actions. What do you want to actually add to this? Well, I want to run robot. I want to run the robot. Let's run the robot. So I'm going to type in run robot. And you'll see that we have a call function, run robot. I'm going to zoom in on this. You can see it. And that's the one that we want. Now, take note. You'll notice the arrow icon to the left-hand side of that. That lets me know that it's an event. Okay. In this case, it's also kind of a function, but we're not going to get into that too much. So let's go ahead and just click on that. And yay, run robot. So when the game starts, we're going to go ahead and run the robot. Then this one's going to fire, and anything that we add to this is actually going to start to happen. Right? So save often. <laughs> so we're going to save and we can compile if we want to There's not too much going on here right now so i don't have to worry about that so since we've already added in our little sensor we can actually bring that sensor into the graph as a reference to it and we can make it do something so we're going to make that sensor actually run but we need to bring it into the graph first so over here we're going to go ahead and grab our sensor and i'm just going to left mouse click and drag it and i'm going to put it somewhere right about here ish that should work so just click drag this in and let go now this has a pin on the end of it and I can left mouse click and drag off the pin, create a wire. And when I let go of it, it's gonna say, what do you wanna do? Well, I wanna run this light sensor. So if I say run light sensor, I get two options. We wanna worry about the top one, right? So there's run light sensor and I'm gonna run that one. And yay, now we get this other node. So I'm gonna select both of these and move it over a little bit. And then we just want to connect these up. So I can click on this pin, drag out, and then connect it to the in right there. Perfect. So what we've done is when the game plays, we're going to run a robot that fires this one. And then when this robot starts running, we're going to actually run that sensor. So far, you with me? Everybody going with me? This is good, right? Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> so many questions in the chat. Thank you. Mm, yes. <laughs> so something else I want to point out in here is that our sensor, let's go ahead and take a look at this really quick. Our sensor does have a way of actually telling us what it sees and what it's going to be running into. And this is done through this draw sensor node. Sorry, draw sensor boolean. It's inside this node, right? So if I turn that on, that will actually make this little lines pop out of here that we can see when we play the game. Okay. Now, something we want to do, let's go ahead and dock this back up here really quick, is that we want this to create a loop, right? We're going to run the sensor, and we're going to continue to run it basically forever for the moment, right? Now, right now, what it's going to do is it's going to run it, and then it's going to stop, and it's not going to do anything. So 
let's make a loop out of this. If we grab this run robot up here and I can copy this or I can duplicate it. Let's talk about copying first. So if I select it and hit control C and then move my cursor over here to the right a little bit and then control V, it'll pop up right where my cursor is at. So now on my out, I can actually run that robot again. So what this is gonna do is it's going to create a loop. So it's going to begin playing. It's going to run that robot. Boom, it's gonna come down here. It's gonna execute through these little white lines. And then this one's gonna come back up and it's gonna run that robot again. It's gonna go through this line and then it's gonna run that robot again. And it's just gonna loop over and over and over. So yay, we've created a loop. We finished our code. So don't forget to compile and save. Okay, so what does this actually look like? Well, if we go into here, and I press the play button, this thing should drop, boom. And you can see there's a little, let me zoom in on this. You can see that there's actually, and it's, it's slowly moving. <laughs> there's just enough gravity to make it move, right? So it's, it's slowly moving forward. Yours might not actually do that, um, but you can see where that sensor is actually looking. And when it actually gets to that little black line, it will actually give us a little bit different of a reading across that sensor feedback at the very top of that. And since it's doing it, we'll just kind of let it roll, which is actually kind of funny. I did not expect it to do this. Um, you can actually move these things around in the world and then test them, which was where I was going with this anyways. But since it's doing it, I'm just going to let it keep going. And you'll notice that sensor is going to start to change. Do -do 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 -do. And then when it gets to the other side of it, do -do 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 -do. that's the feedback that we get. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and quit this. So I'm going to hit escape on the keyboard and that'll stop running the simulation of the game. Um, let's go ahead and move this down a little bit so it doesn't Actually, I don't want to go into the ground, right about here-ish. Now if I hit play, it should kind of stay still. Yeah, that's much better. That's what I was expecting, perfect. So now we've got our sensor working, which is awesome. This is a good thing. So let's kind of like play with this because I want to talk about what's actually in the uh, the lesson plan too. So on page 19, it talks about actually moving the robot around from one place to another so you can kind of test this. And you can do this really easy. Just select the robot. And if you grab that arrow, you can actually just slide it over here. And I'm going to hit F to zoom in on it. And just make sure it's going to be over that line, right? And now when I hit play, wait for it, you can actually see that I get a sensor feedback right here. Okay, so that's page 19. Now, here's something that's really cool that I don't talk about inside the, the actual uh, lesson plan, right? And Brian, check this out. I don't think I ever told you this either. Up at the top, um, you'll notice that we have an eject button, right? Now, if I click inside of here, I'm like, I'm actually inside the pawn. Right, and I can fly around like I would want, and that little thing follows me. Ooh, it's staring at you, right? But I want to get out of that. I want to eject out of that pawn. So since I'm in game and the game is running, I have to hold Shift and hit F1. Now I get my cursor back, right? And if I click on this eject button, now I can actually, the game is still running, and I can actually move this around in 3D space. This brings me to what Brian was talking about earlier, where we want to make sure that the sensor isn't too close or too far away. Because if it's too far away, you'll notice that that feedback becomes, well, diluted, I guess is kind of a way to explain it, right? And if I go too far, you'll notice that those lines don't touch the ground anymore, right? So if it's too far away, it's not going to get any feedback. We want to make sure that we're getting feedback, right? I can't push it in the ground any further, but that's as far as it goes. Now, the distance from the sensor to the ground is going to obviously affect it. You can see this, right? right? So when we build our threshold, which we're about to do, we need to keep that number in mind. So while it's sitting on the ground, the lowest number I'm getting is 36. Right? Let's move this over. Yeah, 36. Okay, so that's how we want to work with that. So next, since we're still kind of in game, I want to go ahead and just stop it. And I can hit escape as well. So I'll just stop that. And this will kind of set us back to where we were before. So... We know how to create a loop and we know how to kind of test it to see what kind of feedback we're getting. So that's a big plus. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to create a threshold and say, hey, when this robot actually sees this line, this black line right here, we want it to actually stop. We want it to like quit sensing and we want it to do something else. So to make that happen, we need to go into our actual event graph. So inside of here, we need a little bit more room to work. So let's take our run robot here on the second part, right? This whole second section here. And I'm just gonna slide this over to the right and I'm gonna break this pin. So to break this pin, this wire right here, I'm just gonna hold down the control key on the keyboard and I can click and drag. And you can see I can kind of drag it off and I could attach it to something else. Or what I can do is I can hold down the alt key on the keyboard and I can just click on it and that'll just disconnect it and it goes away. So that's how I would do that. So what we wanna do now, and this is down on page 22, we're gonna go ahead and add in 
uh, sorry, no, 21. We haven't got to 22 yet. What we're going to do is we're going to add in a little bit of math in here. So that sensor, if it gets down to a specific number, and we're going to use 50. If it gets down to that, we want to be able to check that and see if that's actually happening. So our sensor output, we're going to say, hey, I need to actually do a little bit of math with this specific one. So that pin, just left mouse clicking and dragging. And when I let go, I can type in at less than and equal to, and you'll see that I get a float less than or equal to a float because we're working with float numbers. If you don't know what a float number is, it's basically a number with a decimal point. Pretty easy to kind of work with, right? So we'll just go ahead and select that. And now we have a value that we can throw in here. Well, what value do we want? Well, we know that the lowest number that this got was 36. This is gonna depend on your robot, right? So I'm just gonna say less than 50 because that should kind of catch everything, which would be nice. So if it's less than 50, we need to actually put that if statement right in here, right? And inside of Unreal, it's called a branch. So if we click and drag off of this red pin, or if we click and drag off the out where the execution is, either one, and type in if, we can actually get a branch, which is right here. Or here's a little shortcut. If you hold down the B key on the keyboard and left mouse click and drag, sorry, just left mouse click, boom, we get a branch. What? You can just connect these up. Oh, you didn't know that one? Wow, power tool. Oh, man, I love this thing. It's great. So I'm just going to pull from my out here and connect it. Here's another pro tip. We're going to do this one, right? So I'm going to zoom in on this. You can see this a little bit easier. Now, thus far, I've been clicking and dragging to connect to these. But here's something that not everybody knows. I'm going to hold down the shift key, and I'm going to click on this pin. That actually highlights that pin. If I continue to hold shift and then click on this condition, it'll connect them. Now, this may not seem like much, but... If you've got something that's way over here, you can hold shift, click on that pin, and hold shift and click on that one, and then you can connect them at a distance, which is really nice. Right. You don't have to yeah. try to drag and, and get the mouse to bump against the side to keep the scroll going. Or Right. That's yeah. no fun. Now, I actually just connected this incorrectly. I don't want this connected to true, so I'm going to hold down alt and click on that. I actually want this connected mm -hmm. to false. So while we're running this, if it ever becomes less than, or while it's less than or equal to 50, um, it's going to go ahead and run this robot. Right, did I put that right one in there? Yeah, I think I got this one in here, right? This one always confuses me because, you know, five out of four people are dyslexic and I'm only working with true or false here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say <laughs> compile and save that. So what is this going to do? So what's gonna happen is that this sensor is gonna stop running as soon as it gets to a certain threshold. And I might be able to actually make it roll if I drop it. Yeah, it's not gonna do it. So let's say play and let's go ahead and say eject. And now if I move this over here, it's still running, it's still running, it's still running. And then it stops because that number is less than 50, right? And then it's just totally done. So yay, we can get our sensor to work. That's awesome. So we're gonna stop that. So we know that this code is working. So yay, save. <laughs> Just double check it again. That's what we want. Okay, so next up, we actually wanna make this thing move. So we're gonna need a little bit more space here. So we're just gonna to continue to move this run robot over. I'm gonna hold Alt, click on that pin to disconnect it. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a sequence to make the motors run. Now the motors are already built in on this, so you don't have to try and make them. They're ready to go, which is awesome. And you can actually find them here and here, whoops, not that one, that's a wheel. So these two right up here. So that one and that one. And just like our sensor, we can actually drag these out and use them, which is gonna be really helpful. But before we get to that, we actually need to make them fire basically at the same time, because we want it to roll forward. And to do that, what we're gonna do is I'm going to introduce you to what's called a sequence node. And these sequence nodes are great, they're fantastic, right? So from our false, I'm just gonna left mouse click and drag and drop in a sequence. And I'm just going to type in the word sequence and we'll find our sequence right here. Boom. So it's going to do the first one, which is zero in this, in this language, right? And then it's going to do one. So then zero, after that, then one will happen, okay? And what we're gonna have it do is we're gonna have it run our motors. So if we grab our motor up here in the top left, so I'm gonna grab my BP motor A, and just click and drag this into here. And now we have a reference to this in here and we wanna run this motor. Well, this is actually really easy because I can just pull off this pin here and type in run motor and you'll find we have a run motor and a run motor with time. We're gonna ignore the second one. We just want the run motor. So just that one right there. Don't click on that. 
boom, now we have a run motor. And you can see we have a speed. So let's zoom back in on that, sorry. We have a speed that we can set this at. Hold on it, we'll get to that in a minute, <laughs> right? And we also wanna run our motor B as well because we have a motor. Let's go ahead and select this. You can kind of see this. Come here, machine, right? So this one on the screen left, this is our motor A, right? And this is our motor B. I just want that to sink in for a minute. Motor A and motor B. The other part that I want to sink in, and this goes back to what we were talking about yesterday in the previous video, is that these are rotated 180 degrees from each other. So while this one needs a positive number, this one is going to need a negative number to make this thing move forward because they're going to be traveling. Well, you'll just see what happens, right? Just trust me on this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to then take our motor B from over here. And we'll do the same thing, boop, like so. Now, I can just duplicate or copy this one. Now, we copied last time, so let's duplicate this time just so that you can see how this happens. Just select this node, and then wherever your cursor happens to be in Unreal 4, <laughs> preface that, I'll hit Control-W, and that will actually duplicate, okay? So Control-W, right? W, or upside down mountains. I don't know, either one. So we'll connect our motor B into the target, just like that. So perfect. Now we've got this mostly set up. Now we just need to start connecting our wires. So the sequence, we want this to run A, and then we want it to run B. And this happens like almost instantaneous in computer time. Like we as humans will never see a difference. So this is going to work really well. Now, once it's started to run those, what we want to do is actually run that robot again so that it continues to cycle through. Like so. Yay, just like that. So then we need to set up a speed. Now, in the documentation, uh, it definitely gives you a speed to kind of work with. Um, or do I? Did I leave it out? I left it out. Oh, I'm going to be giving away answers. Oh, no, we did leave one in there. Okay, well, we'll leave this at 10. <laughs> it's kind of up to you to kind of experiment how fast you want your robot to go and how well this is going to work. Um, it does take a value between negative 100 and positive 100. And if you'll notice... I goofed this up. This needs to be negative 10 because that B needs to be a negative to get it to do what we want it to do, right? Cool. So let's check this out and see how this is going to work. We've changed the code. So we're going to compile and save. I'm going to drag this down here. And I'm also going to show you something that's really kind of nice. Instead of Unreal, while you're working with code, you can actually debug it really easily, which is awesome. <laughs> I love this feature. And because we're working with wires, you can kind of think of electricity or water running through these, right? And what's going to happen is we'll see these wires light up down here in the order that they're actually going to happen, which is great. Now, before I do that, let me just bring this up here. You want to make sure that you're debugging the correct, whatever it is that you're debugging. Like in this case, it's a robot. There's a little filter up here in the top that actually says which object, which actor in the level you're going to be debugging. And in this case, mine already has the right one in there. If yours doesn't say that, just click on this and select whichever one you're actually working with. So if you've got multiples in there, it'll let you know if one of them selected, by the way, right? So that's good. So this is all set up and ready to go. So now if I drag this over here, let's go ahead and put this here. And if I press the play button, we should see this move. Yeah, and you can see those wires down there light up and then they turn off. But our robot's still moving, right? Well, we didn't tell it to stop. We just told it to go. <laughs> all we told it to stop doing was paying attention to how much information is coming back from the sensor. Once that sensor kind of shuts off, it's done, right? You can see that that sensor, if I zoom in on it, it's still reading at 48. It isn't getting any feedback at the moment. Now these run motors are just telling it to run. It's not telling it to stop. It's just telling it to run. So we need to tell it to stop moving because we don't want it to go out of its own silliness. We're going to lose the match. We don't want to lose. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe Are we throwing our bets? Is that what's going on here? Okay. So this code we're going to go ahead and comment it, which is really nice. Something that we can do really easy here inside of Unreal. So I'm down on page, let's see what we want, page 28. Sorry, I'm going to zoom in and out. Right? So this whole section right here, we want these ones to go ahead and be commented out. So with these selected, I'm just going to press the C key as in Charlie, and that will add in a comment and get a big comment box. You're like, yay. So we're going to call this drive or drive straightforward or drive robot. Whoops. Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, my spelling skills are amazing. 
you get Grammarly inside of here? The <laughs> we can make that request. <laughs> See if the text over there at Epic will make that happen, right? Okay, so this will allow us to drive forward. Now, when we actually hit that threshold value, so this one right here, zoom in on this real quick. I'm going to hover over this corner right here. So this is our threshold. When we hit that threshold and hit the pin, so it stays there, right? When we hit that threshold, we want that to actually stop the motors. Well, we've already got our motors referenced right here. So we can copy these or duplicate them and we can put them up here. So I'm going to hit control W to duplicate them. Caveat, something to know. If you're in Unreal 5, hit control D, not control W. <laughs> That's why I said that. Unreal 5, they changed it. So there's that. So now we have our motors up here and we're going to tell them to stop. And in this case, we're not really worried about making this happen simultaneously. We can actually kind of stack them one after another. So this is another thing to kind of think about. When do you want things to happen? If you want them to happen basically simultaneously, a sequence is going to work a little bit better. So with these set up this way from the true, we can come up here and we're going to say stop motors. Stop motor. Sorry, there's no S on there. We'll just type in stop motor. Boom. And which motor do we want to stop? We want to stop motor A. Now, unfortunately, we can't just connect both of these up on here. That does work with some Unreal stuff, not this one. Okay, so I've got that. Let's go ahead and take our stop motor and control W, duplicate that, connect our B like there, and we'll connect this one like so. Cool, so this will stop our motors. So now, compile and save, and let's go ahead and drag this down here. And what's actually kind of interesting, and hopefully you'll be able to see this on the actual, let's close my details here. You'll be able to see all of this on the video. So if I hit play, you'll actually see the wires fire. Let's see this in yellow. You'll see the wires start to fire down this direction. And then as soon as it hits that threshold, it'll really quickly start to fire up here once. And then you'll see them kind of fade, which is kind of fun. So I'll go ahead and hit play and watch it. Boom. And you see it just stops, which is great. So everything's just quit working, right? So this time, if you were watching the wires, watch the actual robot. and it just quits, right? There you go. So I'll hit escape, go and get out of there. Whew. We're getting there, we're getting there. <laughs> we have almost a functioning robot, right? So we have a way to drive forward. We have a way to stop. So let's select all this, add a comment. We'll say stop robot. Now what's awesome about these little comment boxes, if I click and drag on the comment box, it'll take all the nodes along with it. So this is very handy, right? So I say compile and save. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make this robot turn around. And again, this is going to be up to you. You know, how much salt do you want in your, in, on your French fries? <laughs> kind of thing? Like you can make it turn around really, really fast, or you can make it turn around nice and slow, or you can make it do all kinds of crazy things, which we don't have time. Well, we may not get to crazy things today, but I'll at least give you the idea of what's going on. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to stop motor B. I'm going to have the motor actually reverse direction for a little bit, right? So let's take our stop motor and delete it out of there. So just select it and press the uh, backspace or delete key on your keyboard, right? And that gets rid of it. And then from our motor B, what we can do is we can say run motor for time. Whoops. So this will run a motor for a specific amount of time. Okay, so I'll just hit enter. Go ahead and take that. And you'll notice that we've got quite a few other little things going on in here. And you'll notice, I just want to point this out, this one along with these actually have a little timer in them. Okay, so there's something that's going on deep within these. Spoiler alert, what happens when you double click on this? Mm, yeah, mm, make sure you save first, <laughs> right? Down the rabbit hole y'all go. All right, so I'm going to connect this one across here and go to in. So we're going to stop motor A, and then we're going to take our B, and we're going to say, okay, we know that it was running negative 10 before, and we've got a motor speed up here, right? So what if we put in something like 10 and make it go the other direction? Well, we also need to know how long we want that to actually run, okay? So in this case, let's say two seconds, right? So it's going to basically run this one for two seconds. And in the previous lesson, what we're creating right here is a specific kind of turn. So yeah, down in the comments, let me know what kind of turn we've just created. This is, this is where I test you. Mm, yes, mm, what kind of turn have we created? 
Say, mm -hmm. hey, Mr. Gatlin, it's X kind of turn, right? There it is. Now, this is no longer stop robot, so we need to change that. So let's double click on that. Instead of stop robot, we're going to say turn robot. What kind of turn? What kind of turn is this? What is this, right? Okay. So now that we've actually got a robot turned around, we need it to start running again, right? So we have our run robot down here. So I'm just going to duplicate this one. So select it and control W, bring this up here, and I'll connect this across. So it's going to be our turn robot. I'm going to go ahead and just click on the edge of this comment and just bring this all inside. So like so, go ahead and save that, right? So now if we go ahead and drag this down here, zoom out so we can watch our code, always double check it, right? And I'm gonna hit uh, one on the keyboard just so we can get kind of a far distance away from this. And we can take a look, don't forget to save. I'm actually gonna just save all of them now. Yeah, save. Now, when we save this, it's gonna ask if we wanna save the map. There's another reason I wanted to do this. And what that means is I basically have moved this little guy around or I've done something inside this world. So yeah, I do wanna go ahead and save it because maybe I wanna add something else to it, right? So we're gonna just say save selected. Okay, so now when we hit play, our robot should go forward should get to it, it should notice it, and then it's going to turn around. Oh, and then it goes. And it goes uh. right nice. 12-point turn. It's, it's getting there. It's, it's like getting... Austin Powers in the uh, cart. In the right. airport. <laughs> over and over and over, <laughs> right? So we basically kind of created something that will just kind of follow this outside edge, which is, eh, we can do better than that, right? So this is where you get to go in and kind of play with this stuff. So our motor speed is 10. Well, what if we set this to like a thousand? <laughs> I'll let you know that's not going to do you any good. You can get all the way to 100. I'm not going to go to 100. We're going to do like 30. That should be fine. Go ahead and compile this and we'll drag this over here. You don't necessarily need to watch this, so I'm just going to kind of hold this over here, right? And if we hit play, it'll be nice and slow. And it'll spin for two seconds. Yeah, there we go. So that's getting a little bit better. But I don't know if you notice this. Check out this tire. Watch this tire right here. There's a limit to how much grip it can actually grip. I don't know if you guys can see that on the on the video, but it's like it's spinning like crazy, right? Like, uh, like, uh, okay, they're just doing it. I mean, but that's not bad, right? So maybe what we want to do instead of having such a high value, so let's set this back to like 20, right? So now we know that it's going to spin a little bit slower. I highly suggest having some sort of a like piece of paper to write down what numbers you're using using in here or you can create comments in here too be like you know just click whoops just move your cursor somewhere over here and hit the c key and be like oh well 20 was too slow right 20 speed or whatever so you can create comments inside of uh, your code over here just to kind of keep track of stuff um, with these guys selected if you just hit delete it will go away which is nice right so that was going to make it run a little bit slower but i want it to run for a longer time so let's say three seconds instead over here and we'll hit play so now it'll turn slower but it'll turn for a longer amount of time there we go and it gets basically the same thing so these variables you can kind of play with to get what it is that you want to kind of get so yeah play with it see what you can actually do yeah that's one of the joys of working with robots is that you can come at it from so many different directions you can try it faster for less time and then you deal with the you know, the, the slipping and the unreliability and, and maybe the risk of flipping over or something unexpected mm -hmm. happening, or you do it slower for a longer period of time, which just starts getting annoying because it's like not going fast enough. And so you want it to go faster. And, and so, uh, that's the, that, that's the great thing. And that's where you will iterate and you'll find out like, where's the right balance of like getting this done quickly and accurately. And when you're dealing with robots and thinking about automation and, and think robots that function on their own, obviously time is, is important in a lot of cases mm -hmm. and as is things like safety, which we'll cover in later lessons. But, but those are two obvious uh, trade-offs that you'll have to make. And so, so this experimentation is kind of fun. And like Gatlin said, there's only, there's one type of turn that he decided to use here. We know, we already know there's, two other types of turns we learned yesterday. So you might have an opinion that you could test and see if a different turn or different idea works better. Yeah, absolutely. So to finish this actual lesson plan off, and then maybe I'll get into some kind of fun things that we're kind of playing with too. Yeah, we're, we only got like a page left. So we have created basically a sumo robot that will get kind of to the edge and then it will turn around, right? It's not moving too quickly, but it's moving well enough, right? So what happens 
if I want to actually compete against my buddy, right? Or my rival, what, you know, whatever they're, they're frenemies, your frenemy, you're going to fight up with your frenemies, right? We actually want to have a couple of these robots in here. Now there's a couple of ways we can do this. Now this is the one that I built, right? Like I want to, I want to take this up against clever, like, right? So he's going to make his own. So how do I get my robot to fight his robot, right? Well, if I want to fight my own robot, I can, you know, make a duplicate of this. So with this one selected in here, right? I can actually hit control and B as in Bravo. And that will actually go inside of my content browser and actually find that one. So there it is. If you're looking for it otherwise, you can come into our robot learning blueprints, robots, and then right here. So let me zoom in on this so you can see this, right? So I'm in this L2 robots. So it went down quite a ways there, 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 and then there. And this is the one that we've been building, right? Now you notice there's one in here that's got all the answers just in case. <laughs> right? So this is the back of the book right here. And then we've got one over here that's actually got the sensor in place, but it doesn't have the code just in case you're having a really hard time putting that sensor in place. So students, teachers, be aware that this is what's actually inside of here. So if I drag another one of these ones out, it's going to say, hey, the actor you've placed is outside the bounds of the current level. Do you wish to continue? That's totally normal. That's fine. Just hit OK. That's cool. And now I can lift this one up. I can rotate it around. And when I hit play, these two are going to bonk right into each other and be like, yay, stuck. <laughs> kind of. They're actually, the wheels are spinning, though. We need right. a big thinking, hammer to smash it to pieces. Well, flip it know. off into outer space. These are the things I've heard before. Right? Exactly. <laughs> so now I'm like, okay, cool. This is the same one, though. So if I change the code in here, it's going to be affecting, whoa. <laughs> It's going to be affecting both of these robots, and we don't want that. I want to go up against Clever Like, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just select this one, and delete it out of there. What we can do instead is with this one selected, because this is the one we've been working on, if you right click on it, we can actually come up here and say duplicate. Okay. So this is going to make a duplicate of it. And in this case, I'm going to rename it, and we're just going to call this uh, BPC, and we'll call this one Shadow. Okay. So now if I drag this one in, I say, hey, it's outside the level. That's fine. And if I open up the blueprint for this one, right? So this is clever likes. So I'm going to leave this on this side. With this one selected, here's another way you can get into blueprints. You'll notice that it's selected up here in the world outliner. And you'll notice right here, there's a little edit BPC shadow, right? So I can click on that. This is going to give me the code for this one. And in this case, to make it really obvious that it's something a little bit different, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to just push it forward and you can see I'm moving a little bit forward. So now I know for sure this is mine. Actually, let's just do it here. Let's go up a little bit, right about there-ish, right? So now when I hit play, these are actually two different ones. So they're gonna behave a little like that. That's actually kind of funny. So <laughs> they're gonna behave a little bit differently. So what if I were to go in here, go into my event graph and be like, you know what? I really want this thing to do. Where's my speed, right? I want this to be like 50. And I want this one to be like, uh, negative 50, right? Compile, I've changed the code. And now I hit play. Let's move these down here a little oh, bit. Oh, boy. So mine's going to go a lot faster. <laughs> like wheelie into him, right? Oh, maybe that wasn't a good idea. No. Oh, Give no. Hit you in the belly. <laughs> oh, I admit, submit. I submit. I submit. Take thing. that. So this is kind of, this is why this becomes fun because you can start to kind of play with this stuff and see, oh, what is it going to do? What's it going to do, right? Now, here's the thing. We're on one computer, right? What if I want to actually send this over to my buddy on a different machine? Well, there's a whole different set of ways to do this. And one of the ways I've actually created a video for, so we'll make sure that that link is down there and below, right? But there are a couple of other ways to do this too. So I want to show you a way that may be a little quicker. If you, if you have to use the internet, this isn't really going to work, uh, but you can do this instead. What I'm going to do is right click on this. So I'm going to go to the shadow one, right? Because I want to send this one over to Clever Like. If I right click on it, I can actually, where's that? Show in folder. I want to do show in Explorer. Where are you at? Am I losing my mind? Show in Explorer. Why won't you show me in Explorer? Oh, I haven't, I haven't saved it yet. So let's save it first. So I'm going to right click on it and say save first. Okay, right click. Now I can say show in Explorer. What this is going to do is it's going to open this up in a Windows Explorer, or if you're on a Macintosh there too. And you can see I have this BPC shadow. So this is my robot. This is a U asset file. This file, right, I can then send or put it on a thumb drive. This is why it wouldn't work so great in the real world uh, if you're just doing internet, but you can put it on a thumb drive and then you can take it over to somebody else's computer. And if you put it in the same exact location, 
in the same exact project <laughs> for those that are taking notes in the same exact folder in the same exact project it should work fine okay because it has all the information that it needs now if you're like i don't know where i want to put it right just put your thumb drive in go to where this is saved and if you drag this into the actual content browser down here, you will actually be able to just drag and drop it into your project. So it's the easiest way to make that happen, right? Totally and completely doable. Option number three, because I didn't talk about the one on the video, um, but this is in the actual uh, video description. Sorry, it's in the description in here. So there's this Blueprint UE. So if you go to this website, so blueprintue.com, right? So what I'm going to do is let's open up this one, right? And wait for it. There we go. If I select everything that you see here and I right click and say copy, right? And I go back over here. I can come into here and I can say, create your blueprint, right? And then I can right click in here and paste it. Oh, you're going to give me the code instead. Look at that. Um, you can actually get the nodes. Ooh, I wonder what's actually errors we're getting here. Title it, my thing, my robot. You're gonna fight me today? You're gonna fight me today. Okay, so you can actually paste this in here and you'll actually get um, create blueprint. There we go, now you gotta hit it. And now you can see I have my run robot. I have my run robot here. I've got uh, the code that actually goes with it. Now this is gonna look really long and strange because it's a macro that we've created specifically for it, but it should connect, right? And then it's got all of the code that we need inside of here, which is really cool. I'm going to delete this because it's anonymous, but it's all here. And you can actually like find these too. So you can copy the code, you can copy the embedded stuff and send this back and forth to each other, which is really cool. So I'm going to delete that out of there. So there's like three or four ways to kind of make this stuff happen, which is really kind of fun. Okay. That's awesome. So I sense a battle in our future here. I'm going to have to like... I'll try to peek over at yours while I'm hiding mine. So I'll have to right. see if I can What's going yeah, see what you're building. <laughs> so this brings us to the, the, the end of the lesson plan, but there's a couple of things that I definitely still want to show you. So some little bonus kind of content that you can kind of play with in here. One is it kind of the end of the lesson plan on page 39. Um, there is a threshold calculation worksheet, and this will allow you to we can bring this over here real quick, um, actually kind of check the information and see so you can actually do the mathematics behind this to see what's actually going on down inside of here. So for those of you that are creating lesson plans, this might be something that you want to grab. This is totally free. It's there. It's for you to use. Grab it, use it, do whatever you need to, right? Print these off, put them up on like a worksheet, put them on, you know, the magic whiteboards. There's this funny name for those. I don't remember what they're called, right? So you can totally have this set up and ready to go. So worksheet, put it on there, and this will give you a threshold. Now, what you can also do here inside of Unreal is that there is a threshold calculator that's built into this project, which is in kind of a funny place, but it's really cool and easy to get to. You should only have to do this once, and then you'll never have to do it again because it'll always be in a specific location. This thing is to actually like register it with Unreal. Not sure why it's not doing it automatically. What you should see if you come up to Windows is this editor utility widgets, and it'll say threshold calculator. If this is not here, let me show you what you need to do this one time, and then you should never have to do it again. If you go into blueprints, okay, and you go into robots, and you scroll down, you'll find that there is a threshold calculator in here. If you right click on this, the very, very top, this says run utility widget. Okay, so learning kit robots, blueprints, robots run threshold calculator so i'll just click on that and you'll get this pop up Ta -da! this is the same thing as coming up into window and actually opening it up here too and this is akin to that worksheet i just showed you so you can actually click and drag on these and change the slider number or you can type in numbers so if i click on it type in like 14 right and then in this one i'll say i don't know 75 you know for whatever it happened to be and this will do the math so you've got your white section the black section then the black section and then the threshold. And then I hit the threshold calculate. It'll actually give me the number over here. So 44.5. So if I come over here and I change one of these, you can get the mathematics really quickly just in case you're not actually going to be doing it by hand. I highly suggest learning how to do this stuff by hand, by the way. <laughs> Maybe that's just because I'm old. Back in my day when we had nine planets, we had to do this stuff by hand, right? <laughs> so this is going to be really handy to have to know that this exists. So this is totally a thing. All right. One last thing before we go anywhere. I had showed you guys that we do have, if we go into the maps, 
We're going to lesson two. We have the sumo ring. I'm not just going to leave you hanging. I'm just not show you the sumo ring, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just double click on this. That's going to say, hey, do you want to save the map that you're currently in? I'm just going to say yes. Wait for it. And yay, we have a sumo ring. I'm going to grab my content browser and I'm actually just going to drag this off to the other screen for a moment just so that we have more room to kind of play. Now, inside of here, if I move and look around, if I hit one, I'm right here. If I hit two, I can be up above it. If I hit three, nothing happens. But if I hit zero, I get a top shot. I'm like, yay, this is cool, right? So what I'm going to do, let's bring this back here a little bit. Let's go back and grab our robots. So inside of our blueprints, we have our robots from lesson two. And we have the one that we created. We can just drag that in there. And then we have the one that I created that runs a little bit faster. I'm going to set it right there. Say, hey, it's outside the current bounds. Just say, OK, that's fine. That's totally cool. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this one around 180 degrees-ish and face it like so. And I'm actually going to slow this one down. Let's double click on this to open up the blueprint because 50 is a little bit high. So we'll set this at like 30. And 30. And we'll go ahead and compile that. This one over. Whoops. We can dock it there. Do this. OK. So I'm going to hit two on the keyboard to get kind of closer to this. And I'll zoom in on it. And we'll make sure that these are not in the ground. So I'll select both of them, use my move gizmo, just kind of lift them up a little bit. So when I hit play, they should robo battle. Yay. Um, something that's worth knowing is that there is a little Easter egg, and I'm not going to show it to you. I'm going to let you figure it out. The first robot that goes out of bounds something is going to happen to it. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> You're going to have to play with it to find out. Um, something that is kind of fun, though, too. So if you've got spectators, uh, you can actually watch on the Jumbotrons. They're kind of stuck right now, so you're not going to see a whole lot. But I hit Escape, and I hit Play again. Uh, you can actually sit over here and kind of watch this stuff happen, too. So, yeah, spectators. Love One it. technique for sumo battles is to face them back-to-back -back away from each other. This way, if you didn't program your robot properly, then it'll just lose automatically and just walk right out of the line. So, so if you're going to do a battle against another robot, I highly suggest kind of putting them back to back and, uh, and then you'll see kind of how they move around. It adds a little bit of anticipation as well, wondering when they're going to find each other. Um, and maybe you start thinking of, no, Oh, <laughs> somebody went goodbye. I said, I wasn't going to show you. Sorry. I lied. Yeah. So while he's talking about that, was something, see, that was fine. It's not going to go out. It's really good. Yeah. <laughs> something to debug. Something to debug. Uh, go in there and figure out what I did wrong with my code. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so that's, that's pretty, uh, that, that's pretty cool. Uh, that, that sumo ring is really awesome, dude. Nice job. Oh, actually, something else I want to point out before we go, uh, because I, knew, I thought I was going to forget about this one. You may find a situation, and let's turn these suckers around. Undo, undo, undo. Right? So if you get robots, oh, come here. I just want this one. If you get robots that get stuck on top of each other, and you're in here like moving the camera, and you're like, oh, they're stuck, right? There's actually a ground pound. I don't know if you all have played like old pinball machines, but if they get stuck, if you hit the G key, as in ground pound, they'll actually kind of bounce a little bit. So you do have that ability too, and you can just spam this thing, and they'll just kind of hop. You know, one of them writes itself. And, uh, there you go. <laughs> it's hey. funny, like you try to time the ground pound, so just as you're landing, they hit it again. They try to flip it back. <laughs> I've spent like so much time hitting G, like, oh, this is fun. I'm gonna try to get this back on oh, its yep. wheels. I showed you all my spoilers for today. That's not true. I do have some more of it as we you're go forward. There's some cool other tricks that I'm gonna show you all with this too. So. Um, not too bad. So about an hour to get through the whole thing. Uh, I want a huge thank you for everybody that showed up for this. And yeah. you know, I'm really excited to see what kind of robots y'all build um, as we move forward. We're also going to, um, spoiler, as we get forward through this, we're going to show you how you can customize your robots with specific shapes. Um, there is, you know, what, what Brian affectionately calls the bling box uh, that is also built inside of here. So it'll be fun to kind of see what you all actually do and how you actually create something that's going to be super fantastic. Um, yeah, and hit us up with questions when you have them, because I know it's a win, not an if. And mm -hmm. yeah, we're excited to see just all the awesome that happens out. And I want to see the brackets too. Everybody show me your bracket. Show me who won. I want to see this. Yeah, we definitely have to, we definitely have to stage a battle, uh, uh, whether we maybe we lead the way and then get the community to to pitch in their robots to us yeah, so we can yeah. have a, uh, a, a new esports tournament, a virtual robotics competition across the world. That sounds mm -hmm. like a fun idea. 
So yeah, the bling box. That's what I found is all the cool things kids gravitate towards that. They don't even have a working robot. So I would, I would put all the cool stuff in one box and sit there closed in front of everybody. And they would want that. And I would be like, well, when your robot works, then, then you can do choose anything from the bling box to, to decorate your robot. And so, boy, that really motivated students to learn and get their robots working and, and move things along. So the bling box and the decorations for me is just more of a process, you know, let's focus on getting it to work, the mundane stuff, and then get to the fancy fun stuff once you're building on a proper foundation. So mm -hmm. awesome session, Gatlin. That was really cool. Learned a lot of good nuggets today. And that's, that's activity number two. And on Friday, we're going to be doing activity number three. So a normal progression when you're learning robotics with a physical robot is you're you're doing this dead reckoning thing, realizing that's unreliable. And then you want to add a sensor so it could do something intelligent based on the surroundings. And now you could do sumo battles because of that. And another extension of that is um, line following and navigating. So you want a robot to go somewhere intentionally. So next lesson, we're going to be talking about basically like a delivery robot how do you get a robot to follow a guided a guideline from one place to another so join us on friday for that that's activity three thanks for joining us today gatlin thanks a lot that was super yeah. awesome and uh, we'll see everybody on friday cool adios everybody bye